Hi everyone, quick live video to take a little bit further what I was talking about in a post the other day about ties and looking at rhythm reading and the imaginary, what I call the imaginary dotted line in a time signature of 4-4. Four, four. Um, I know that was quite new information for some of you, so I'm going to try and show you a little bit how that works. So we were talking about how there is an imaginary halfway point in the time signature of 4-4 four, four, and what effect that might have if your rhythm involves ties. So I'm just going to turn the camera around. Here we go. And I'll try and show this as I write on this piece of paper. So here we go. So if you imagine there is a bar of 4-4, four, four, let's do this quick, it doesn't need to be posh, bar of 4-4, four, four, and so you imagine you've got four even beats across the top of the bar. What I want you to do is I want you to imagine that we've got four little compartments within this bar that divide where each crotchet beat arrives within that time signature. So remember, 4-4 four, four means four crotchet beats in the bar. And therefore, I want you to imagine that within that bar, we've got these dividing lines dividing the bar up into four even sections, the four crotchet beats. Now, it's not really possible to explain every permutation of this in one go, but I'm just going to give you one or two examples of how the idea uh, works when it comes to trying to group notes together that belong to each beat within that bar. So, for example, if I wanted to write a bar that has eight quavers, so eight quavers, is eight half beat notes. Each quaver lasts for half a beat. Oops, put me across there. Eight half beat notes. You can tell us live. <laughs> so, eight quavers, eight half beat notes. So, we could therefore think of this as being eight single quavers which when they're on their own look like they've got they've got a tail and sorry a stick coming off them and a little tail okay so we're going to try and group these together in a bar of four four and the simplest way to do it is to show that the notes belong together in each of the four crotchet beats so rather than having them as four sorry rather than having them as eight separate quavers, we can group them or beam them together into pairs. Like that. And now, even though on the music, those uh, dividing lines that I've sketched across the top aren't there, we would see that the notes were grouped together, belonged together, in each of the four crotchet beats, okay? So that's one way that you can indicate that eight quavers are in a bar of four, four, and they are grouped together in four pairs to indicate that they belong to the four crotchet beats in the bar. But there's another way that we can do it. So, put another bar of four, four, we're still going to try and write eight quavers, but rather than having four pairs like that, you can also write like this. It's not very neat, but you get the idea. Two groups of four quavers. And what that shows us, the first half of the bar is grouped together and the second half of the bar is grouped together. And that's also considered acceptable uh, as an alternative method to write eight quavers in a bar of four, four. And what that introduces us to is the idea that there's an imaginary halfway point in a bar of four, four, in a time signature of four, four, that tells us um, that we're not allowed to cross that not allowed to cross that dividing line within a bar of 4-4. Four, four. We tend to group notes together 
in a time signature of 4-4 four, four, as to whether they belong in the first half of the bar or the second half of the bar. It's considered a, neat, a, neat, a way to make it easier to read. You can do it like this, four pairs of quavers or four single crotchets worth, or you can do it like this. So that's two minims worth. They don't sound the same as two minims, but four quavers lasts the same as one minim. Yeah, each quaver is half a beat and a minim lasts for two beats. So that's another way that we can divide a time signature of 4-4 four, four into, into two minims worth, two lots of two beats worth. Now that's one way, four one beats worth, and that's another way, two two beats worth. And this introduces us to the idea that we shouldn't group something over an imaginary dotted line that's at the halfway point of a bar of 4-4. Four, four. So for example, whereas this one is okay, it would be wrong to do this. That is wrong. Because what we've done now is we've unevenly divided the bar into uneven sections. But not only that, we have crossed that imaginary halfway point by putting that beam across. And we can't do that. So it's acceptable to divide the bar evenly in four parts when you're in 4-4. Four, four, four lots of one beat. And it's acceptable to divide it in two lots of two beats. But you can't group something over that imaginary halfway point in the 4-4. Four, four. The only time that it's acceptable to cross that halfway point, and like you might find in music theory there are a lot of exceptions to prove the rules, so sorry about that. But the only time that you can cross, or you can group something, or um, beam something, or write a note that would cross that imaginary halfway point in 4-4, four, four, is if you need to write this rhythm. Or even something like, if there was two quavers at the start of that bar or whatever it was. But it's okay to put a minim on the second beat. So that's beat one, that's beat two and three, and that's beat four. It's okay to have a minim at beat two, even though that is grouping together effectively beats two and three. And the reason for that is that's considered such a straightforward rhythm to read that no one's gonna have any difficulty reading a two beat note that starts on beat two. You can't group notes together that are different note lengths starting on beat two. So I'd, I'd here showing you what it would look like if you beamed beats two and three together and they were quaver notes and that wouldn't be okay. You can't do that. You can write a minim starting on beat two. That's okay. And the idea that this is easy enough to read is really an awful lot to do about what this is all about. Using what we call, uh, you see referred to as engraving rules. Engraving rules just means um, the kind of um, what's accepted methods in music publishing to write uh, rhythms and, and beats and groups of notes together to make it easy to read. That's a really f an important part of what these decisions are. So what has this got to do with this month's theme? Not only just in terms of rhythm reading, but also in terms of ties. So it comes down to a question that I posed the other day, where I talked about how um, a rhythm such as um, this one, And I had a tie there. So this is a rhythm I posted in a question the other day. And I said, first of all, depending on how far down the journey you are in terms of learning to read music, how long does this sound last for? These two notes added together. Because when we have a tie, a curved line between two notes that are the same pitch, it becomes one long sound 
added together. And in this instance, that's a quaver, which is a half beat note, and that's a crotchet, which is a one beat note. So added together, this sound lasts for one and a half beats. And in the question, I said, well, hang on a minute, I know that in music, if I write a crotchet, which is a one beat note, and put a dot after it, a dotted crotchet also equals one and a half beats. So the question was, why can't I, instead of having a quaver tied to a crotchet at this point of the bar, why can't I write a dotted crotchet there? Which would, just so we can, rather than imagining what it would look like, I write that for you. So I'm suggesting, I'm um, posing the question, why can't I have this? So this rhythm, let's just check that we're happy that that would sound the same as this rhythm. So we've got a quaver in both of them. Then we've got a crotchet in both of them. So the same so far. And then I've got in this one, a quaver tied to a crotchet, which lasts for one and a half. And here I've got a dotted crotchet, which also lasts for one and a half. And then the bar finishes with a crotchet in both of them. So this is all the only thing that's changed in the two. So the question is, why is this way of writing that rhythm wrong? And why is this rhythm, of, uh, sorry, this way of writing that rhythm correct? And the answer is because I can't cross an imaginary halfway point in 4-4 four four with a note that crosses that divide. Or I can't, I can't beam notes together that crosses that divide and I can't, right notes that cross that divide themselves, the, unless it's a minim at beat two. That's the only time I can do it. So that's why this is an incorrect way of writing that rhythm. That's why this is an incorrect way of writing that rhythm, because if I was to work out where those notes were landing, the quaver is on beat one. It lasts for half a beat. So this crotchet, must land on one hand. I remember when I'm trying to write a rhythm like this, I can write every half beat I need across the top. If you want some more information about this or to practice this or for me to show you a bit more detail, then we've got a new video on the website on Read the Dots for members only that explains this in more detail and why I'm writing this across. But just for now, we'll just accept this is okay. So we've got the eight possible points that a note could arrive in this bar, the four beats and the halfway points between each beat, one and two and three and four and. So the question is, why can't I write this note symbol at this point in the bar? So this note has arrived at the start. It's a quaver, so it lasts until the one and. That lasts a crotchet, so that lasts for this half beat and this half beat, which gets me to here. So this note is arriving on the two and. And that means that somewhere in this, this note is the imaginary halfway point that I can't cross. I can't cross that imaginary halfway point with a note that's beginning on the two and. That's not allowed. I need to be able to see where the compartments of 4-4-R. Four, four, I need to be able to see where the compartments of 4-4-R four, four, are in one of two ways. Either four even groups like this or two even groups like that. I can't group something together like this which crosses the halfway point of the bar in here part way through that note. It's not considered easy to read. So this method of writing that rhythm is incorrect. Whereas this method of writing the rhythm is considered correct because I can see in this one so we have it again arriving at the start of the bar it's a quaver so it gets me to one and that's a crotchet so it lasts for this half beat and this half beat so it gets me to the two and and this sound starts on the two and, this half beat, 
and it's joined to a sound that would have lasted all of the third beat as well. So this note is the second half of the second beat and all of the third beat added together. And by writing it this method, I can see that it's clearly shown to me. The sound has started at the second half of the second beat and has lasted for the, th the full third beat on itself, third beat on its own. And so by the time I've added this sound and this sound together, that gets me all the way to the fourth beat. But I could, if I wanted to, still imagine a halfway point in that bar. And I would be able to see precisely, and that's the important thing, I'll be able to see precisely where the halfway point of this 4-4 four, four bar is because I can see that this note is this side of the halfway point and this note is this side of the halfway point. And so that is why this rhythm is written correctly in this way and it would be written incorrectly in this way despite the fact that a dotted crotchet lasts for one and a half and a quaver tied to a crotchet lasts for one and a half. But in the context of this rhythm, that would be the correct way of writing it and that would be the incorrect way of writing it. So, I hope that helps. Get my hand out of the way of the camera. More free tips like this uh, constantly coming here on the group, Read the Dots. Uh, free tips for learning to read music. Please invite your friends, share the page, uh, comment below if you have any questions or you want some extra help. And if you'd like a 30 day free trial of Read the Dots, then just send the Mark Dix Music page a message or comment below and say you'd like to try it out. We've got a library of 65 currently videos from five to 15 minutes. There are a little bit more high tech videos than this um, where I talk you through everything you need to know to learn to read music from beginner to pro in short, manageable chunks and the material is there 24 hours a day when you are. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, give me a shout and I'll see you soon.